following program on Other Than 24 is classified MA. It is intended for adults and may be unsuitable for children under 17. It may contain crude and decent language, explicit sexual activity, graphic violence, or political ideology. Viewer discretion is strictly advised. State of the Nation is an opinion-based program. The thoughts and opinions shared within this program are not intended to offend or disregard anyone's perspectives or beliefs. We aim to foster open dialogue, encourage critical thinking, and explore thought-provoking subjects. Recognizing the importance of diversity and inclusion, this program welcomes all viewpoints and cherishes the right to express them freely. This program also contains the opinions of the participants and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Veterna Media Network. The network believes in a safe space for all ideas to be expressed and on its duty to create such a platform for free speech. Viewer discretion is strictly advised. Channel 4, the British Fabricator. The so-called self-proclaimed gold standard of British journalism, Channel 4, took another swing at former President Gotabe Rajabaksa and boy, it was an A-grade miss. The so-called star witness of its documentary, actually its mockumentary, failed to provide a single shred of evidence. Even the star witness's previous boss tells Parliament that he suspects his former media secretary is making irresponsible statements to protect the real culprits of the Easter Sunday massacre by diverting the attention. All in all, the Channel 4 mockumentary has once again taken the attention away from the real victims and given it to a loser who is milking the victim's pain for his 15 minutes of fame. For comments, insights and analysis tonight, I'll speak to retired Rear Admiral Parliamentarian Sarath Virasekara, Minister of Justice Vijay Dasa Rajapaksa, State Minister of Foreign Affairs Taraka Balasuriya, world-renowned terrorism expert Professor Rohan Gunaratna, former Human Rights Commissioner Dr. Pratibha Mahanamaheva, President's Council Thiramtha Valaliyabda, SJB Parliamentarian Eran Vikramaratna, SJB Parliamentarian Ralph Haki and Australian Barrister Julian Gillespie. Good evening, I'm Mahish Johnny and this is the State of the Nation. Welcome to the State of the Nation, everyone, the show where your opinion matters. In today's fast-paced and interconnected world, it's sometimes hard to find a platform where your voice truly matters. That's why this show exists. Here, we aim to provide an open space for opinions that may not always align with the mainstream narrative. So buckle up, because it's time to get real. Well, as the program progresses tonight, we will dive deep into the Channel 4's debacle and dissect it with various views. But there's this question that keeps bothering me all the time. Why? Why did Channel 4, despite knowing their star witness, is flimsy and untrustworthy, like a rat that'll do to anything to survive, yet the editorial of the Channel 4 decided to proceed with airing this documentary? Why? The supporters of the former president and patriotic elements in the country were swift to point out that it was to create chaos in a peaceful Sri Lanka. Yes, it could be true. But does that mean that the so-called backers of Channel 4, mainly the LTTE-loving diaspora, wanted chaos in Sri Lanka? Do they have any unfinished business that they couldn't achieve while the whole unrest of last year, the Aragalaya? Doing this to create chaos among the Sinhalese Buddhist and the Catholics is a bit of a reach for me. After all, the Catholic community isn't a violent community and has no history in the recent past of getting onto the streets in violence. Besides, they would see manipulation from a mile away, but maybe not uh, from forces within their community. The best example is what we saw soon after the Easter Sunday massacre. Despite the blood of the Catholics were boiling, they exercised caution and extreme care and did everything to ensure there would not be bloodshed in this country. 
So what could be the real reason Channel 4, which has a track record of being anti-Rajpaksa, would come after another Rajpaksa who basically was uh, sipping tea at home without any power in this country's governing system? This is where we need to learn from and remember the past. As Sri Lankans, our remarkable ability to forget the good, the bad and the ugly has cost us in many ways. We need to remember the lessons of the past and make sure that we don't repeat them. Now, as I dive deep into this thought process, I asked what would be so crucial that Channel 4, aka the LTTE diaspora, would be interested in. Is it the full implementation of the 13th Amendment? Is it going back to reviving the failed aspirations of their terrorist leader? That what could it be? By next year, this time, Sri Lanka will be heading for another presidential election. We think the usual horses will run the race for the top job. Incumbent President uh, Ryan Wickremesinghe might throw his hat in the ring if he knows he can win for sure. Opposition leader Sanjit Premadasa has already said yes. Former President Maitrapala Sirisena wants to return for a second term. Andrew Kumar Disanayake from the NPP looks like he would run again. While many candidates are getting uh, the spotlight, the only component that is missing is a common enemy. Let me explain. Now, in 2015, the common enemy was incumbent President Mahindra Rajapaksa. The chant that fueled the hatred was go golden horses, corruption and accountability to the Rajapaksas. That got President Maitrapala Silusena and the Yahapalnya joke over the finish line. In 2019, well, the common enemy was the Yahapalnya. And the chant that fueled the hatred against it was the lack of security, a lawless country, and a disciplined society. That got President Gotabe Rajapaksa over the finish line as well. It's not just here in Sri Lanka, but even around the world, this same thing happens. In, uh, in 2016 US presidential election, it was the chant, lock her up. And the common enemy was Hillary Clinton. In 2019, it was hating Trump. So for 2024, we here in Sri Lanka have yet to have a common enemy that would fuel the hatred of the society to push them to vote in the way they are required for a particular society or a party. Despite the economy being the dominating factor in the 2024 election cycle, no candidate can accuse this or that against a single other candidate as every politician running for the part of the president is part of the economic problem as well. Fueling hate against President Gotabe Rajapaksa is not that hard. After all, he failed his presidency. Why not also add some fake allegations of a mastermind of the Easter Sunday massacre into the account to get all forces against this country to rally in their hatred of the Rajapaksas? Very soon, we will know which candidate will rise through the ranks promising accountability for the Easter Sunday massacre. And at that time, you will see the real agenda of this mockumentary. Back in 2019, soon after the Easter Sunday massacre, there was an individual who alerted the whole nation to the impending tactic. He said, in the end, the forces against this nation will put the blame on an innocent Sinhalese Buddhist. Lanka Deepa Patre Didas Dahanami Maimasa Dolosweni Iridaki and Adatamin Bharakara Anduak Hadi. Hadim Ganati and Hondam with Sudumai Kela Baharakara Anduak Hadim Ganati and Hondam with Sudumai Kela Adata Nogalepin, meet a Vasaraka Tehapeti Api Sandahankara Pukisiam Karanawa Ungi Womanawa Peter Maven a quarter Palakar Latino Field Marshal Sarat Fonseca Mahatmia Sandahankaranoa Maker Madividin to Hondar Matakai Etuma Avasta තුනක බොහොම බර කරලා කිව්වා අවුරුදු දෙකක්වත් යනවා මේ ප්‍රශ්නේ ඉවර කරන්න කියලා. ඒයි එතුමා මේ කීපෝතාවක් එකමද එකම විදිහට කියන්නේ. මේක මේ ආණ්ඩුවේ තියෙන බරපතල වුමනාවක් කුමක්ද මේ අන්තර්වාර පාලනයක් අරගෙන ඒම සඳහා. අන්තර්වාර ආණ්ඩුවක්. මේ අන්තර්වාර ආණ්ඩුව මේ ඉන්ටීරියම් ගවර්න්මන්ට් කියන එක Loki Mibandu Avasta will have Shishin Trasta Biak Ethikarala, a Trasta being Pida with a Patech Samajeta 
අනිත් බටහිර රාජ්‍යන්ට අතපොවන්නට ඇති හැකියාව වර්ධනය කර ගැනීම සඳහා තමයි මේ අන්තර්වාර පාලන ක්‍රමය පාවිච්චි කරන්නේ. එතකොට අන්න ඒ ක්‍රමය ලංකාවට අරන් ඇවිල්ලා අන්තර්ජාතිකයට වෙනත් විදිහකින් කියනවා නම් බටහිර ඇමරිකාව ඇතුළු බටහිර රටවල් වලට ලංකාවට පාලනයට මැදිහත් වීමට අවස්ථාවක් සලසා ගැනීම මේ හරහා සිද්ධ වෙනවා. අපි කවුරුත් දන්නා කාරණාවක් මේ සම්බන්ධයෙන් ඕනෑ තරම් වාර්තා තියෙනවා මේ වහබ් වාදය කියන එක නිර්මාණය කරන්නේ බටහිරින්. බටහිර විශේෂයෙන් එංගලන්තයේ ප්‍රමුඛ රටවල් ඉන්දියාවේ හින්දුන් සමග මුස්ලිම් ඉස්ලාම් භක්තිකයන් ගැටීමට සැලස්වීම සඳහා තමයි වහබ් වාදය ආරම්භ කරන්නේ. ඒක පස්සේ සෞදි අරාබියාවට මැද පෙරදිගට ගියා. හැබැයි මේ වහබ් වාදය හරහා ඔවුන් බොහෝ රටවල් ප්‍රමාණය ලිබියාව සිරියාව ඒ වගේම ඉරාකය මෙබඳු රටවල් විනාශයට පත් කරන්නට මෙතන තියෙන බරපතලම දේ තමයි මේ වන විට මේකේ පහර දුන්නෙත් ඉස්ලාම් අන්තවාදීන් පහර කෑවේ කතෝලිකයින් හැබැයි ඒ වුණාට බෞද්ධයන් මේ හරහා කුපිත කරවා ගැනීමේ අවශ්‍යතාවක් විවිධ විවිධ අයගේ කතා බහවලින් පේන්න තියෙනවා If only we had listened to the venerable Thero back then. We'll be right back. Welcome back everyone to the state of the nation. Now in our lead story tonight, the ground breaking, earth shattering, mountain moving, boot shaking expose from the very people who brought us another authentic, factually correct documentary that stood the test of time. Also known as Britain's gold standard for journalism, the Channel 4 documentary. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to understand how important this documentary is. It is meticulously researched, very well presented from the get-go, riveting, and presented in such high class and impeccably accurate. And now, I am honored to present this documentary to you. Here's Channel 4's groundbreaking documentary about the Mahamolakaru of the Easter Sunday massacre. Your Honor, I would like to call to the stand my surprise witness, the ghost that never lies. Ooh. But I, I'm, I'm the only one who can see him and hear him, so I'll let everyone know what he's saying and doing. Objection, Your Honor. This is ridiculous. Overruled. I'll allow it. You better be going somewhere with this, Mr. Griffin. Thank you, Your Honor. Ghost that never lies. Did you witness the events that took place on that fateful day? You did. Well, how interesting. And uh, do you see the culprit or culprits in this courtroom today? You do. Yeah. Oh. Well, would you kindly point him or them out for this court? Don't point at me, you jack. Oh, come on. Who messed up with the tape? I mean, can we like really play the real clip of the uh, documentary from Channel 4, the one that is groundbreaking and bring our viewers uh, up to speed? Security. Uh, I've got rights. Look, I Look at it. He's got a picture of your wife. That though. Oh. All right. Anyone else here seeing his wife? That's all right. That's okay. I mean, come on, man. We ha- really have to get our act together. Can we be serious for a moment and and actually play the clip uh the 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 uh, Channel 4 documentary, the groundbreaking one? Say what now? Uh, the executive producer has decided not to air the clip because it's demeaning to the people okay hang on. okay okay <sighs> ladies and gentlemen i've been told by the executive producer of this show that we unfortunately will not be telecasting the clip from chamfo due to its demeaning nature and its very crass attempt to politicize and profit off of 275 innocent lives. Let's get real for a moment here. 
Now, if Shalfo and its staff have forgotten those innocent lives that matter, look to my left. They are the innocent victims of this heinous massacre carried out by deranged, sick individuals. Those families who were left to bear the pain are still dying every day. The pain these deranged terrorists have caused is unforgivable. And yes, we need to find the truth. Not fantasies, but the truth. So that in the future, another 275 innocent Sri Lankans would not pay the price for the stupidity of each and every one of us and our attempt to go behind shiny lights. So, Channel 4, let me get this right. You pompously claim that there is groundbreaking evidence that you have acquired and it's just a media secretary of an ex-terrorist carder on camera not presenting a single picture, a recording and an audio recording or any tangible evidence, not even dates of specific incidences, but just making a blind statement, hearsay. And that's your earth-shattering, shocking evidence to prove that the former president killed to come to power? Keeping the sarcasm on the so-called mockumentary aside, let's talk real facts. Every year towards September, Sri Lanka awaits some form of slander. Ever since we defeated the LTTE in May of 2009, some form of anti-Sri Lankan event has been happening in time for Geneva UNHRC sessions. This year, the UNHRC sessions begins uh, on the 11th of September, that's tomorrow, and will run till the 13th of October. And this year too, as expected, here comes the announcement of another expose. The lead role this time was different, as was the theme. Still, the ultimate aim was to build discord, create disharmony and weaken national security by removing officials who have protected this nation, our very own heroes. Unfortunately, the Cardinal has officially plugged himself into this plot as well. Two economic asylum seekers are the latest star actors in the Channel 4 mockumentary. However, the much ado about the 47-minute program allocated only 10% of its show to the allegations aiming to remove Major General Suresh Saleh from his post as state intelligence head, a call officially echoed by the Cardinal immediately following the program. I mean, the individual who asked for international inquiry about the Easter Sunday massacre after not believing the case presented in uh, the Sri Lankan courts and not believing the Supreme Court's verdict didn't even take one single breath to investigate whether these claims by Channel 4 were valid against the much decorated Major General, but was very swift to request for his removal. The crux of the program aims to present the notion that Major General Suresh Saleh facilitated a suicide jihadi mission as that was the only means to bring Gotabe Rajpaksa to power as president. That suicide mission was the Easter Sunday massacre on the 21st of April 2019 by eight suicide bombers killing 275 innocent victims. The program starts with the Cardinal alleging a grand plot to come to power. If the Cardinal has evidence of a plot, did he present the evidence to the two presidential commissions and the parliamentary select committee? The allegations of a plot to come to power is link, uh, linked to the Channel 4 star witnesses who also echoes the same. But neither he nor the Cardinal can explain how, without a grand plot or mass murder, the Sri Lanka Podujana Perumuna, the SLPP, swept the polls in February of 2018, the local government elections, clearly signaling that the government that was in power, the Yahapal Nejok, when the Easter Sunday massacre took place, had already lost the people's mandate. It is a pity that Channel 4 took no pains to cover the path to violence by the leader of the suicide mission, Zaharan Hashim, in 2016. No mention was made that uh, the intel units uh, shadowing Zaharan were disbanded and General Suresh Saleh was removed as military intelligence head and sent on a diplomatic mission to Malaysia. Channel 4, while covering the plight of the Easter Sunday victims, left out Mohammed Taslim, a Muslim, a Sri Lankan Muslim, who informed the authorities of what Zaharan and his goons were up to in early of 2019 and was tortured by Zaharan and his goons today. He can't barely walk. 
Channel 4 did not mention the indoctrination that Zaharan was subjected to since 2016 and the recovery of speeches and video clippings discovered in India and Sri Lanka. Some of them were even presented here on this channel by Professor Rohan Gunratna himself. Channel 4 also chose not to cover other acts of violence by Zaharan and his goons on innocent Muslims. Channel 4 and the participants of that mockumentary promoting the notion of a grand plot to bring Gotabe Rajapaksa to power must first dispel the fact of the acknowledgement by ISIS hailing the suicide bombers as their fighters as well as the ISIS material found in their possession. Channel 4 must also dispel the FBI report issued by the US State Department confirming that ISIS committed the Easter Sunday massacre which was confirmed on their official website. Channel 4 also must provide evidence to support the allegations by the whistle, uh, whistleblower that Major General Suresh Saleh came to a coconut plantation in 2018 to discuss the assignment with the suicide bombers. Flight details, ticket bookings, emails, uh, something to say that he was in Sri Lanka at that time. Remember, at the, uh, at the alleged time period, Major General Suresh Saleh was on official diplomatic posting in Malaysia. So, his movements are recorded. Does Channel 4 also have evidence uh, to uh, prove that whistleblowers came, claim that General Saleh uh, placed a call on the 21st of April 2019 to a, a TMVP operative uh, to travel to the Taj Hotel and pick up a phone from someone? Can Channel 4 prove such a call was made, the contents of such a call from Malaysia? I mean, call records exist, don't they? This mockumentary by Channel 4 has more holes than Swiss cheese. There are more questions than answers. The plugging, by plugging irrelevant incidents unrelated to Easter Sunday, Channel 4 has proved it has no case against Major General Saleh. All their main aim is to claim that the murders were planned by the Rajpaksas and not ISIS. This is certainly a serious allegation and cannot go without a challenge. Channel 4 must provide the proof and evidence to negate the established notion that ISIS was the reason why an indoctrinated team led by Zaharan Hashim wanted to avenge, and, uh, avenge the defeat of ISIS by committing multiple attacks in Sri Lanka to signal the new ISIS caliphate in South Asia. If Channel 4 has any evidence to prove this version wrong, then Channel 4 and their whistleblowers must provide far more than a comic relief. Let us also not forget that the Supreme Court ordered former President Sirisena, who was, uh, who was the president during uh, the Easter Sunday massacre, to pay a compensation of 100 million rupees. The Prime Minister, who is presently the interim president, must also pay the same amount upon the conclusion of his term in office. Other officials were also required to pay compensation. One of these uh, officials uh, were the former head of state of intelligence who in his evidence to the commission claimed that intel reports received would have reached nearly 15,000 people who knew about the attacks prior to the attacks. 15,000 people, around 15,000 people knew prior to the Easter Sunday attacks that it, it was going to happen. Therefore, many alleging a grand plot would have also been in the know though they pretend not to. When questioned, the former Defence Secretary admitted that they were aware that they had thought some minor incident would occur. Remember that? Probably those claiming a grand plot thought the same too. And now their conscience must be pricking them for knowing that their own was cast into the lion's den and nothing was done to prevent their deaths. Be that as it may, it appears that Channel 4 has been funded to create mischief in Sri Lanka. That previous Channel 4 program against Sri Lanka uh, have been funded by the LTTE diaspora raises the question of who is fi financing this whistleblower too. The program seems uh, like it wants to make Catholics hate the Muslims and together both to hate the Sinhalese Buddhist. The other aim is to weaken the security apparatus ahead of another critical election, just as uh, it was done in 2016, paving the way 
for radicalization to spread unmonitored and silencing officials who have put the country first in their duties. It looks like all those parroting a grand plot appear to be party of an ugly plot to unfold in the coming months and require the removal of officials likely who will prevent them. We must learn lessons from the debacle and ensure that national security is given the foremost place and conjunction of the nature and nature of this Channel 4 documentary is promoting do not gain the propaganda and promotion they aim to achieve by providing a platform for the usual troublemakers in their latest mockumentary. Sri Lankans must identify who the enemy of the nation are if we want the nation to be in harmony and peace. Let's learn the real truth about what happened on that Easter Sunday attack. There are so much of evidence that exists. If you want, you can read a lot of things. There are books, the entire report uh, from the two commissions. We need to learn the truth. All right, let's bring in Professor Rohan Gunratne, an internationally renowned terrorism expert. Uh, he, he's also the author of Sri Lanka's uh, Easter Sunday Massacre, Lessons for the International Community. He joins me via Zoom from Singapore. Professor, uh, thank you for being here. I know you watched the so-called earth-shattering documentary. Any truth to their claims? I know you have uh, often told in my program that the attack wasn't politically motivated. Can you please repeat that? Apparently, Channel 4 hasn't read your book, yet in the, in the title it literally says, Lessons for the International Community. The Channel 4 documentary on the Easter attack relies primarily on two sources. One is a police officer and the other is a man called Asad Maulana who is seeking asylum. And Asad Maulana is primarily telling that he introduced uh, Zaharan Hashim and Zaharan's uh, brother Zaini to General Suresh Saleh in Vanathavillu in Putlam where the terrorist training camp was. And he says this meeting happened in February of 2018. The immigration records clearly show that General Suresh Saleh was not in Sri Lanka and General Suresh Saleh was in Malaysia. So the Channel 4 should ask for the immigration record from Malaysia or from Sri Lanka. And then in 2019, again, Asad Maulana says that during the attack, General Saleh contacted him to uh, go and meet a suicide bomber whose device didn't work in Taj Hotel. General Suresh Saleh was in India at that time. He was following the National Defense uh, College course. So I think the, the documentary by Channel 4 is based on information that has not been validated or verified. So the there will be a lot of discussions and debate uh, and even litigation uh, with regard to the Channel 4 documentary in the coming weeks, coming months and coming years. Indeed, uh, Professor, what is the truth? What really happened? If, if it is not politically motivated, then what happened? The Channel 4 documentary is largely based on the conspiracy theory. And this conspiracy theory has been advocated by people who want to make political change in Sri Lanka. Even today, and even in the coming days, in parliament, politicians will use the Easter Sunday uh, attack for their advantage, either to remain in power or to come to power. That is why it is so important for the Sri Lankan government without having another parliamentary select committee investigate this incident for the Sri Lankan government to invite New Scotland Yard to come to Sri Lanka and to give an opinion based on the body of evidence. That is the three fact-finding reports, the Presidential, Parliamentary and the National Security Oversight Committee reports. Then the CID, TID investigation reports. 
then what the Australian Federal Police, the FBI and Interpol teams have found out because they investigated, they interviewed the terrorist suspects. So based on all this, as well as the Islamic State, Zaharan uh, says that I am doing this attack to please Allah. Not only that, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the ISIS leader, claimed the attack. So all this can be considered by New Scotland Yard. But I would also make a request for the Sri Lankan government to request New Scotland Yard to investigate Asad Maulana and anyone else who has spoken in this uh, documentary because the information is not true. They can very easily look at Asad Maulana's phone, his laptop, and uh, the people whom he has been in touch with and determine whether Asad Maulana traveled uh, to Vanatha Villu and had a meeting with General Suresh Saleh. So I think that the Sri Lankan government should take the initiative to invite News Scotland Yard so that uh, independent report can be issued by the British government on what happened in Sri Lanka, especially because British citizens were killed and injured. It is the right thing to do and they should do it. Absolutely. Professor Rohan Gunaratna, the author of uh, Sri Lanka's Easter Sunday Massacre, Lessons for the International Community. Thank you very much, sir. Good to see you once again. We're going to take a short commercial break. More reactions to the mockumentary by Channel 4. This is the State of the Nation. Back in a moment. to the state of the nation we're continuing our lead story the mockumentary that was shot down in flames with facts let's get uh, let's uh, get some reactions to this pathetic attempt to once again create chaos in sri lanka by the ltte diaspora backed uk's channel 4 let's bring in parliamentarian prayer admiral sarath veera sekhar sir thank you for being here i appreciate your time um, your reactions to this so-called groundbreaking video by a well-known fra fabricator well, my is, um, if someone believed that uh, uh, nine Muslim extremists and a pregnant mother with her children uh, commit suicide to pave the way for a single Buddhist leader to become the president of this country, I think that is ridiculous. So these institutions like Channel 4, funded by NGOs and uh, the separatist Tamil diaspora, Right, they keep on producing these type of videos because they know very well that in our country there are hypocrites who are ever willing to let down the country for political gains. So that's the thing. And we know uh, the Australian Federal Police and also the FBI Federal Bureau of Investigation of USA, they have conducted investigations and also the US Department of Justice, they are given a verdict. So all these international investigations prove that these allegations are baseless and false. So of those people whom I said about this hypocrisy, we, I think we, as a nation, we should be ashamed. Indeed, uh, sir, this looks like another attempt to tarnish the image of this country by putting the whole judicial process and the investigations to questions. Uh, um, I know you closely worked with uh, former President Gota Rajpak, sir. You uh, uh, were his uh, Minister of uh, Public Security. Do you see any truth in the ac accusations uh, made by the media secretary of uh, Pillar. Yeah, this person, Asad Maulana, I think he was uh, the media secretary of the TMVP and he robbed the money from the secretary, from the secretariat and then uh, ran away and then now living in exile. So why he has taken such a long, long time to come out with this so-called truth, you see? The Channel 4 has planned to release the document just to coincide with the Human Rights uh, Geneva uh, session and they are doing that regularly to tarnish the name of the good image of the Sri Lankan forces and the intelligence services. And Saharan very, uh, very clearly in his last video just before the attack, he said that he is doing that uh, in retaliation to these uh, Muslim devotees who were killed, this Christchurch in New Zealand. 
and he says that he is uh, he and his father mother parents uh, the children the wife and all of them are sacrificing uh, their lives uh, in the name of allah he never said that he is doing that to bring uh, water before power so why should he lie just before he die so that's my question and um, saharam was expelled uh, expelled from the madrasa schools in uh, in sahind marudu and he is a known uh, extremist and he was a terrorist who were trying to take revenge and i must say my is at the same time uh, the now uh, the the hapal government now who are in the opposition they must take the full responsibility uh, of this uh, is a sunday attack because uh, a few weeks before the attack uh, the intelligence services have categorically said in right in in written form they have informed the government to arrest sahara so if you arrest sahara this uh, attack wouldn't have happened so they did not do that and they had at the same time there have been 10 incidents before the attack right and the government was very reluctant to take action because uh, national security was compromised to uh, to gain the political advantage that's the thing you know at wanath villua they have detected the uh, explosive dump it was not investigation properly and the taslim who had given the uh, information was shot at and also maun and buddhist uh, statues were destroyed and some politicians prevented uh, from uh, arresting them and also indian uh, intelligence service very clearly said that on this day uh, the attack will take place but the government did not take action so as i said before they have compromised national security for political gain so therefore opposition has no right to talk, ask about the investigation the dal right uh, parliamentarian or bre admiral sarathwir sekara uh, we have to leave it at that thank you very much sir now one of the most prominent accusations made by the star witness of this mockumentary is that major general saleh had a secret meeting he organized to plan the mass murder event The only problem with that statement is that the time frame does not add up and the Sri Lankan government uh, as the Sri Lankan government posted Major General Saleh on a diplomatic mission in Malaysia. So as you know protocol dictates that if you are working for a foreign mission all your movements are accounted for. Channel 4 just had to check with the foreign ministry about his movements to verify the dates of his star witness to see whether that the Major General was in Sri Lanka at that time. We all know Channel 4 didn't however the mockumentary reported this fact after the major general denied it when you lie it's hard to keep the lie alive listen to what the 41st chief justice had to say about this watch they don't align see when you make up a story now you know how to make up a story <laughs> when you make up a story your elements must align yeah now if you are fabricating a story one well, that's a basic thing a person who's fabricating a story your elements must align even if you are writing a novel yeah your elements must to align <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so th- that th- there is no alignment of these elements of this story there is no alignment and they are just thrown up thrown up with an ulterior objective now this country is not given a chance to settle down yeah Now that's that's my main concern. That was the chief uh, 41st chief justice of Sri Lanka Sarath N Silva. Now if you are making accusations you need to be ready to prove them in a court of law. So how strong and credible are the facts presented by this mockumentary of Channel 4? Joining me now is President's Counsel Siranta Balaliya. Thank you very much for sir for being here. Appreciate it. Now hypothetically the evidence uh, mentioned in this mockumentary is basically hearsay. can it stand in a court of law mahesh uh, my dear old friend the people who did this video i don't think they even thought about the law you know this is using parts of the video i will uh, demonstrate you certain things on that which you can come to your own conclusion you see there is a i have a theory you know that you see uh, there is a difference between making an allegation right there is a difference between making an allegation and then looking for facts to establish it and 
looking at the facts and making the allegation. The logical process is the second process. What is happening here is they make a statement and try to prove it. You see, with uh, looking and looking for facts to prove it. So that is that is not the logical process, not the scientific process. That is what is happening here. You see, now this biggest uh, the the biggest uh, impact here was a, was a video saying that you know this Saleh, my this Saleh, the military intelligence man met with Saharan and his crowd at some lonely spot in a hut. Uh, there is a video footage of it. You know what I mean? So I think the people may believe that this is actually Saleh meeting Saharan. Which it is not. You will see as you as you go to the as you start the video at that point, there is a flash, a two or three second flash which says reconstructed. Reconstructed. That will be missed by a lot of people. It is it is a video that has been done recently, you know, based on what the Maulana chap is saying. They have reconstructed the video showing that Saleh is meeting these people, you know, and they say a white van comes in and they show a white van coming in. Right? Then the six people got out of the van and they saw the two or three people getting down from the van and with their backs to the camera and even those are blurred. Right? And then they saw somebody shaking somebody's hands and the van shook hands with Sahara. Right? And since Saharan is a, this is Saleh meeting Saharan. You see, this was a play that was enacted very recently. It has Saleh or Saharan, nobody is in that, in that business, you know, in that, in that video. So, people, I think, <laughs> have been misled very badly that this is a video of this particular meeting. You know what I mean? So, I really don't think there is anything much to get worked up about this, this affair. You know, it is just a, shall we say, a bit of a, uh, not a very relevant issue here, you know. Then there is a, another thing here, you know. As far as I know, I, the commentator himself says at the beginning of the interview, at the beginning of the story, right, that uh, IES claimed responsibility for this on the same day. So, if the IES has claimed responsibility, I don't know why these people are jumping up and down and saying IES is not, not responsible, you know. It's not worth this. This is not worth taking legal action on. You know, I, I, I think this should be just you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, all right, let's leave it at that. Thank you very much. That was President's Counsel, Firan Favalia. Let's take a short commercial break. More on this story and more State of the Nation coming right up. Back in a moment. To the state of the nation. So, what is our Ministry of Foreign Affairs doing with regard to these fake allegations by Channel 4? Are we even stating our displeasure? Here's the State Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sarkabal Thuri. The government takes these accusations very seriously, and the government will be having an inquiry pertaining to these allegations. Uh, but we also know the history of uh, the uh, Channel 4, and we feel that they have a, a Sri Lankan bias. The uh, Assad Maulana. Uh, whether this source is a credible source is, uh, is another question that uh, we need to uh, answer. Well, the, uh, the documentary doesn't specifically state what date uh, the, uh, 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 Mr. Sali uh, met with the, uh, the Islamic group. Uh, but what we can confirm is from February 2016 to uh, October 2018, uh, uh, Suresh Sali was serving in Malaysia. Uh, but we don't know during, during that period uh, whether he came back and went uh, f forward, when, whether he came on holidays to, uh, from uh, Malaysia or not. That's something which I think we'll have to get, uh, find out from the Ministry of uh, Defence. That was uh, the State Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, Tarak Bal Surya. Well, Minister of Justice, Dr. Vijaydas Rajbaksa, back uh, in, I believe, around in 2017 or 2018, alerted 
the Sri Lankan parliament that ISIS was in fact recruiting. That entire speech fell on deaf ears of the Yahapalane. And a couple of years later, 275 innocent lives paid the price. Joining me now is the Justice Minister himself. Minister, thank you very much for taking the time. I know you're really busy and I really appreciate you speaking to me. Now, did you know back uh, when you made that speech in Parliament that Gotabe Rajapaksa was the head of ISIS who had the capacity to move nine suicide bombers to win his presidency, as claimed by Channel 4? Your reaction, sir? When I made a statement in the Parliament on 18th November 2016, that was... 29 months prior to the Easter Sunday attack. I was not aware about the Easter Sunday attack, but I knew that the country's security situation was at a very grave risk. Especially when the Inspector General of Police was appointed and also after the appointment of the Defence Secretary, I gave sufficient warning to all those who are responsible of the security of the country that country security situation is at a stake. But none of them took any remedial measure. Uh, 29th months after my statement only that happened, I made the statement in the parliament. And there was a, a serious campaign uh, within the government itself and also uh, within the fundamentalist group, whereas that they were trying to brand me as a person that who was trying to, you know, whip up the, uh, 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 that is the racial politics and I was trying to make the country a bloodbath and there was merciless attack against me by many factors of the society, including some of the Muslim MPs in the parliament. But after 29 months, uh, from the date of that statement, they realized uh, the truth of my statement and the gravity of the statement I made, whereas they took very lightly. Uh, now, of course, uh, the, we have lost over 269 lives, over 502 people were injured, all our brothers and sisters, Sri Lankans. Now, the people are waiting for justice. There had been many steps taken uh, by the law enforcement authorities during the present government as well as the previous government. But still that the people have some doubt about as to who were instrumental in making that operation. Therefore that we have a duty, uh, whether it comes from this corner or that corner, it makes no difference. If there is any material uh, for us to investigate it, even with the slightest material, that's we will do it. And we also want to find out what the truth is. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Minister of Justice, Dr. Vijitasa Rajapaksha. Uh, I really appreciate it. I also asked the opposition about their views on the matter, and this is what they had to say. Watch. In this Easter bombing, we need an investigation. The issue is that people wouldn't trust uh, just a domestic investigation anymore because the people who are complicit in one way or the other until their innocence is proven are people who are in power and who are presently wielding power even under the present president. That's why you will need an international component in the investigations. You will need the expertise in the investigation. And then the second one is really prosecution, the rule of law needs to be seen and Sri Lanka has really lacked there for a long time. So with its AG's department, the private bar, the judges of this country, we all have a responsibility to establish the truth because unless we establish the truth, we can't safeguard even our legal profession. Uh, Mr. Pillayan Asad Maulana has provided everybody the missing pieces of the jigsaw puzzle. Uh, to find out who were the real master brains behind the Easter Sunday attacks. So when we analyze uh, the response by various uh, government officials, two ministers yesterday in parliament, one called for an international inquiry with the uh, support 
of the opposition. The other uh, said that uh, any uh, exposures to destabilize the government institutions will not be permitted. So we can see the, uh, the reluctance and uh, the restrained uh, approach to this uh, whole exposure that has now uh, put the cat among the pigeons. Also joining me now is former Human Rights Commissioner of Sri Lanka, Dr. Pratibha Mahanameheva. Thank you very much uh, for taking the time to uh, join me. Your reactions to this so-called earth-shattering video by a dishonest media institution? Uh, Mahesh, thank you very much for giving this opportunity. Actually, this is a video they have released timely near the Human Rights Council session, which is going to start September. Actually, this is a baseless, false information, misleading information, incorrect information. Then who are behind this? Actually, they tried a similar video, Killing Fields, and that was a fake video. In UNHRC sessions, the Sri Lanka team has nicely proved this is a baseless and unproved video. This is the second episode of the drama. And what they try to do, disclose. Even that army intelligence officer was not in Sri Lanka at a time. Or oh, even they could have easily released when the uh, Easter Sunday commission was there. So the basic one is to win some votes. And Western countries these days are supporting for the reconciliation, rehabilitation, and the language policy in Sri Lanka. With all these things, Sri Lanka is now united most of the time north and south. So LTT support in diaspora and the transnational LTT government in Denmark, they need something to stay with their views and vision. So they tried in Canada Bill 101, that also now disproving. And this is the second attempt where you can see no direct evidence, circumstantial evidence, nothing. A whistleblower. A whistleblower can do anything, but we should at, at least we don't need any type of commission to investigate this because they have already withdrawn that video from the scene. So whatever their efforts now fail, they will come up with another video. Why they take channel for only? There are other media, CNN, BBC, those channels are there, but they can't go behind that channel because a fake video, they will authenticity and put it. The only channel is where they try to a bankrupt channel. They try to get some viewer points and the other, other side, they want to discredit what they have done in the past. And also the real pick is the LLRC Commission, Lesson Learned and Reconciliation Commission. If you really see, you will understand what is channel for. So the government having a responsibility. So this is their unconditional, unconditional, you have to disprove that. Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Pratibha Mahana Meheva, former Human Rights Commissioner of Sri Lanka. Thank you very much. As you very clearly know, the former president responded to this drama. In a media statement, the former president called this an anti-Rajapaksa rant with no merit. In his media release, the former president emphasized that he had no contact with Major General Suresh Saleh until he was elected president in 2019, after leaving his position as Defense Secretary in 2015. A short break now. When we return, we will discuss rising oil prices and their possible impact on our economy. This is the State of the Nation. Back in a moment. to the state of the nation now oil prices have uh, touched 90 us dollars per barrel this is the highest price since november of last year 
Over the last uh, few months, Sri Lankan consumers have gotten used to lower prices due to lower global oil prices. Now, on 1st September, they were in for a shock as domestic prices were revised upward. Now, why are oil prices rising? Will the trend continue and how will it impact the Sri Lankan economy? Let's get some uh, data on this. Joining me now from the data board is economist Imran Furkan. Good to see you once again, Imran. Thank you for joining me this week as well. More bad news for the economy? Oh, depends. It depends. Uh, globally, oil prices have been going up. Um, you know, it, they were low in the last few months and begin to go up. Um, they are at uh, the ranges they were in November last year, but they could go higher, right? And uh, the reason why it's been going up is because uh, OPEC Plus, that is uh, OPEC and, and Russia, have decided to keep their, um, you know, um, voluntary cuts of production going for the next few months as well. And in addition to that, there is recovery in, in the U.S. economy. It's quite strong. Mm -hmm. Um, and therefore, I think uh, prices will keep uh, rising or stay at higher elevated level for a while to come. And uh, uh, what else? Like, uh, do you expect the prices here in Sri Lanka to spike as well? Because uh, I think we're getting to the same rate uh, as we were in last year around this time. Absolutely. Um, if you look at the, if you look at the uh, prices last year, right? Um, in the middle of the year, when oil prices were low, uh, let us just take uh, diesel at 310 or you know um, octane 92 at 318. Um, this was in around uh, middle of the year, but now it's gone up to 361 for for uh, 92 octane and and for diesel it's 341. Um, it's very clear that when you go back to the charts, um, basically it mirrors what's happening uh, in the glo global crude oil market. So lower here, going up now it could be even much higher than mm. this, um, you know, going forward. And uh, what exactly is, is the projection uh, in terms of the economy? And uh, do you still think we will be having, you know, uh, good times ahead? Because apparently, like we talked about last week, the government is very, very, very confident that we are on the right track. The IMF people are coming back here. So w what do you think would well, happen? Um, if, you look at, um, if you look at the components of our imports, right? Uh, so fuel, um, which is in the light blue, is, is a significant component, uh, right? And has continued to be, and, and, and ha actually were higher in May, now a lot less. Um, and also there are intermediate goods, which are you know, made from crude oil as well. So the price of crude, and its impact is very big on the economy. Uh, and also fuel uh, for electricity generation as well, it's, it's quite high as well. So I think we've the, the CEB has asked for another uh, increase in, in uh, electricity tariffs. So I think if oil prices keep uh, remaining high, I think that we have to start planning for this uh, in terms of the economy. And I think the good times uh, in terms of the low oil prices are gone for a while, unless there is going to be a massive um, recession in the US, they might actually uh, could return if the Ukraine war comes to an end. Uh, well, th that depends on, on how Russia and others, uh, um, yeah. you know, react. Because one of the things that people are not noticing is that Saudi, um, Russia, they are beginning to keep uh, oil prices high by cutting production because they realize this is their prime product, right? And they don't want uh, to lower the price of this product at any cost. So I, I believe that even if the war ends, these countries will keep prices high. Everyone wants to make a buck, Imran. <laughs> All right, we have to leave it at that. Uh, economist Imran Farrakhan at the data board. Thank you very much. Well, as you know, our entire program tonight was very much focused on the mockumentary of Channel 4. And as we are running out of time, we have to cut our other segments on health, the brain drain uh, factor, and other social issues from this week. We will surely bring them to you next week. My sincere apologies to our guests who couldn't, uh, who we couldn't get on the air. To share your views, suggestions, and thoughts, do get in touch with us as we would like to hear from you. You can write to us uh, about anything you saw on the program. You agree, disagree, please send us your comments to state of the nation at berana.lk. Uh, Mahish Johnny from all of us at Adhigarana 24. Have a good night and a productive week. I'll see you on Tuesday on Get Real. See you then. Bye for now.